guys and welcome back to the Used Boats TV YouTube channel and I'm about to take you guys with me for a ride on a 2011 Voyager 25 foot Extreme Cruise Triton with the 250 Suzuki 4 stroke. Let's go. Ghost. Watching this video on my YouTube channel, which is Ease Boats TV. The purpose of this channel is to make a lot of boating videos, to take you along with my family and I as we drive boats, show you boats we have for sale, take you fishing, do water sports, teach you how to clean them and dock them, pretty much anything to do with being on the water. Now I've sold this boat sight unseen. When I sell a boat sight unseen, my process at Heartland Marine where I work is the same in terms of we own our inventory. We inspect, check, clean, and correct the boats we sell before we sell them within reason. Then we do a test drive. So what you're seeing here is a boat that we've inspected, tested, checked, cleaned, and corrected, and are taking our customer with us via video test drive. But there's value here because we're going to talk about how to operate it, and we're going to see how this 250 Suzuki four-stroke runs. So with no further ado, let's get started right now. What it really means to live like golden. Now, once you have your boat in the water, because it's got to be in the water to run, you come up here and sit in your very comfortable helm seat with the flip-up armrest. The battery in this is hardwired, so it's actually located underneath the changing room, which I'll show you later. But I'm going to include some links in this video to explain some things so we can keep this video from being 18 hours long, actually. Uh, down in the description below, I'll include a link to a video that explains what to do in your boat one start, how to operate tilt and trim, some boat upgrade stuff, how to tie ropes, dock boats, just little things like that that will help improve your boating experience if you're new to owning a boat. Uh, or if you're a seasoned vet, there's some value in there too. But now, boat's in neutral, batteries are up, kill switch is plugged in, turn the key, the alarm sounds, which means, hey, we're getting ready to start this bad gal. We just turn the key and it fires right up. Now, shifting is really smooth. Right here in the middle, there's a definitive catch for neutral. Forward, we don't lift anything up, we just push it. There's a definitive catch right here. Neutral, see I'm doing it with my fingers? Jazz fingers. Reverse, definitive catch, and our throttle range is beyond that. Juice it a little bit, we're back into the boat. Now, to go forward, obviously, we put in gear. I've had a lot of people that are excited to drive and as they accelerate, they have the finger on the trim up button. Your trim up button is right here. That raises the out drive up and down. Tritons are basically always on plane, so you can kind of cruise comfortably at whatever speed you like. Let's go ahead and talk about our buttons and switches and gauges. Right here, we have our stereo, and this is a new Bluetooth Kenwood head unit. Comes on, we can turn that up here in just a second. We can plug our phone into it also. Here we go, radio. That station doesn't come in very good, but it works. Uh, there's no live well, but there's a button for one. Interior lights are lights on the interior. Docking lights are the headlights up front. Remember, it's illegal to drive with those on at night. Navigation lights, that's the red and green built in up front. And the white light plugged in up on the bimini top, and I'll show you those working. The middle's off all the way down. Anchor light, just the white light. That's when you're stopped at night. Horn, good God, is right here, and it is loud. Uh, if your night light's not coming on sometime, right here is where it plugs in and the wires run through the arch. So right here, it runs through the bimini up to it. Uh, looking at our gauges, we have our bolt, our trim. See it's coming up. See it's going down right here with my finger. It's showing up and down. Depth finder's right here. Speedo, tachometer, fuel, hour meter. So we can plug our phone in right here to charge it. Since the stereo system's new, this won't work anymore to plug our phone into the radio, which is good because that's an auxiliary and this is a USB with an auxiliary. Anyhow, you're welcome. All right, so that was 
the part of the video where I show you the gauges and the buttons and switches, how to operate them, what they do. Now I'm going to take the camera from Billy and we're going to drive this beautiful 2011 Voyager Extreme 25 Express Triton with a 250 Suzuki four-stroke outboard engine. So once again, the purpose of this portion of the video is to show you the performance and operation of this Voyager Triton. So we are a neutral, just idle. We're not neutral, we're an idle forward here. We're in neutral just so I do what I say. Put it in gear, one finger, right there. Shifts very smooth. Now, once again, Tritons are always on plan. They float on top of the water. That's why they ride so good in rough water. Now the 250 has got a lot of punch, but if you're uh, just wanting to kind of cruise around, look at some of these beautiful homes around here at the Lake of the Ozarks and view, enjoy the view, the sky, the wind in your face. I gotta put my head on backwards because this bad boy will rip it off. You can do that, but you gotta know how it operates. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the motor trimmed all the way down. See, down, down. Good thing about a Tritune also with an outboard, you also have a trim gauge by looking behind you. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run the boat full speed trimmed down. The outdrive's gonna be down, and that way we put the most load on the boat. When we're trimmed down, we're forcing the nose of the boat down, way down. So if it hit, misses, spits, sputters, or pops and falls on its face, we know it doesn't run good. If it runs great, then we'll trim up, let that nose come up like this camera I'm using right now. And we can see what our top speed is. Let's punch it. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. That really takes off. So trim down and we're climbing 35 mile an hour. I will say with rear uh, facing seats, even with big motors, they do slow them down a little. So the fact that we hit 30, probably six miles an hour with a rear facing lounge tritunes, pretty impressive. We're running right around 4,600 RPM with three quarters tank of gas and two beefy hunks in the boat. We're gonna trim up one, two, three, four, five. So we're over 40 miles an hour now, six. See that nose come up, seven, eight, over 40, 42, 43 mile an hour roughly, 5,200 RPM. This will probably be our red line. Look at that rooster tail! All right, slow back down. That was like 45 mile an hour right there. So we're gonna trim back down because if we drop a skier or we go to dock boat, it's not gonna maneuver very well when the motor is completely up. So what I wanna do here is go ahead and turn the boat sharp. Sorry, the corner of my camera stand thing caught my elbow. So what I wanna do now is get going with a little bit of speed here, 20, 25 mile an hour. We're gonna see how she turns. So very important on a Tritune test drive, just see how it turns left to right. You know, hydraulic steering isn't extremely smooth, but if it's extremely difficult, might need to top it off. Might need to see what's going on there. So I'm gonna say about 20 mile an hour. Let's go left. I got one hand, it's a one hand test. And we're turning right around, no problem. Let's go the other way, straighten her back out. Do the one hand test to the right. All right, obviously it turns smoother to the right, but no, it turns great. You can easily whip around, pick up a skier, a drop tuber, whatever you want to do. Well, she sure runs great and all of our gauges work, which is really nice. So we're gonna go put her on the trailer. We'll take you for a ride with us on the way back and check out the condition. Thanks for boating with us. Go. Woo -hoo -hoo! boat in the water when you launch it off the trailer is really easy. You just put it in until you see the rear of your boat float. Once it floats, you know you're good. Putting tritunes, pontoons on trailers, sometimes people freak out. And the reason for that is they get the trailers too deep in the water. If the trailer's too deep in the water, the boat floats on top of the water, you, won't, you will only get it on by the grace of God. So right here, you can see how we can see those bunks sticking up out of the water. That makes it easy to just drive her right on. Center to center to center. Just get the middle one in the middle. 
and the outside will go right where you want it to. Like a glove, Bill. Like a freaking glove, you are. Easy. Foot. So right here, see the center of our pontoons are in our bunks? That's what we want. Now sometimes you'll get the rear end kind of crooked, and that's okay. Just get out and really wobble on it. Just push the sides and it'll fall right into place. All right, now we're gonna check out the condition. We got her pulled out of the water here, dripping. Skag's in great shape, cavitation plates there. Prop doesn't look like it's been all chewed up and spit out by a honey badger. Motor looks good, and this was always a question. How does that ladder fold up like that? It doesn't even hit the motor. I mean, I went full speed, never had to worry about it, and I turned about 25 miles an hour to the left and right, and it didn't even touch. So down here, see, it's got the full link extended log. This is a big thing here too, guys, if you're still watching this video and you're shopping. Short shaft motors, half logs, or three quarter pontoons in the back doesn't work good for really rough water, because if you trim it up, the outdrive comes out of the water. So this has a full length center log with a nice little slim platform area behind it and the ski tow bar. So looking at the pontoons, this has been coated at one time and that's why it's still got some of like the shine to it. And we did acid wash it. So once that coating kind of comes off and you acid wash it, it'll look very smooth and clean. You can see just like fine scratches and stuff through here, but it checked out perfectly for the structure test. Both corners in the front are bruised up pretty good. Man, in the camera, it looks worse than it does with my own eyes. But regardless, you can always put those rubber corners up here. That really helps protect the boat anyhow. So graphics look pretty good. It's kind of got like a wrap to it. You can even use some maybe like Never Doll to clean up the railing up through here. Or uh, steel wool. Steel wool will work equally as good. So you got the center walkthrough in the back with that amazing, and that's a custom made ladder by a company here in town. Really good outfit. Uh, Wet Steps is the name of them. Kelly Clean and Sam Casella. Shout out to you guys. If you want an awesome ladder, call them. Wet Steps in Sunrise Beach, Missouri. So over here, so we got some just very fine scratches. It's all just light stuff. Nothing that stops your finger. Some on the rub rail, but we're looking at the condition. We got one little ding right here. Something drug it. Okay. Uh, your bimini top, by the way. That's called a trailer strut. That holds it in that position. Normally that's folded under. It's nice and tall. You leave it up all the time. So we have an entry gate here. Hit the bow, docking lines. We looked at all that stuff. Pop-up cleats. As you can see, the pontoons, all the sides are in pretty fairly awesome condition. It's got the lifting straight sheeted underbelly and the sheeting goes all the way forward. Now guys, if you're still watching this and you're boat shopping, not all tritunes have that sheeting all the way forward underneath it and that's okay. Your U-shaped seating or your U-shaped pontoons will, uh, because of the cross-channel design. Well, that's an aluminum deck. I didn't know that. So this is an aluminum decking. That's awesome. But anyhow, on your circle pontoons, the way the end brackets go, it stops about, you know, a quarter of the way back. And that's fine. The waves aren't going to splash up here unless you're a really bad driver or nosedived it. Uh, speaking of the front, bow looks pretty good. Some little tiny impressions up here on the door. But let's jump inside and check out the condition. So again, the reason this boat is a phenomenal deal you know, what was it, 20, roughly 20,000 under wholesale? That's because of the upholstery. The upholstery is very soft and plush. The seats are all comfortable, but it's got this checking like it was cleaned with Armor All. You never want to clean your boat seats with anything oil-based, only water-based. See, soft, I know you can't feel, but it is very soft. It's just checked. Now a guy could recover it down the road, but it'll last as long as you want it to just like it is. And these seat bases are all rotocast. It's not plywood boxes. So you don't have to worry about rot or anything silly like that. All right, we got more stores like down the sides here. Like that. So you get to your speaker wiring. But other than the checks, the upholstery is very cozy and comfy. That seat's been redone right there. You got removable armrest cup holders. And this is a local brand. It was built in between Camdenton and Lebanon down here at the Lake of the Ozarks. So there's your table table post. And over here, this is a question that I was asked about this one. Is there a changing room? Yes, there is. So you open this door and this canvas all pops up. You can keep a porta potty down in there or a cooler out of the sun. You have two tables. And then also this stuff's in good shape. 
your batteries. Battery is located down there. Wouldn't hurt to spend about $135 and get another battery with a switch. I always recommend that. So this also has the beautiful rear facing loungers. Hopefully you can see, start to see the value even more so now you know you can keep a table back here. But to get the rear facing lounger models like this, you know, with this 250 Suzuki four stroke, under 30 is really, really difficult. Even with like a small engine, like a 50, it's hard to find the seating configuration in that range because it's just so new. Have kind of a significant rip on this seat back right here, which is odd. Probably laid the bimini top in, but you can always stretch it, staple it, whatever. And then you got more storage back underneath that. That just flips up. Now this helm seat swivel slides, and we stared at the helm a lot. Uh, there's your light bar, more interior lights. Check out the storage here. Big storage compartment. Uh, fire extinguishers down there and it's rented for 16 people i love this countertop right here see with this seating configuration they bring the helm forward a little and they eliminate the door because it wouldn't be wide enough but that gives you a nice little area to throw stuff when you're coping out there's a cleaning towel it's nasty i'll throw that out uh, more storage there's a factory ladder if you don't like the blue one but hopefully you can tell that the blue one is way way more awesome than the factory one so your table can go there on that pole and then you can have another one back there in the middle in the floor so you got ski storage in here it's enormous there there see it's great big and deep now i would recommend because i see this a lot on all tritons when they make these ski storage doors you know, if there's no carpeting or anything on it, I would recommend putting some sea deck or go to hydroturf.com. That's where you can get just like a sheet of that foam that's three and back, because that'll be pretty slippery if your feet are wet. Well, my name's Brandon. Thank you for looking at this boat with me. I'm going to show you some sweet drone footage now. Uh, please consider subscribing if you haven't, and I'll see you on the water. Hey, what's up guys? It's me, Brandon Johnson. You ready to go for a ride on a 2011 Voyager 25 Extreme Cruise Tritoon Budge. Hey guys, welcome back to the used boats.
Models popping bottles. Hey.